Okay, guys, so alpha testing for uh, the Catacombs dungeon starts today, but only for YouTubers and admins, unfortunately. I'm so close to YouTube rank. I'm 2,000 subscribers off. If only I had that, I'd be able to play today, but, you know, I'm not worried about it, whatever. They made the forum post, which basically explains almost everything um, to do with the dungeon, um, at least most of it. So, yeah, we're going to go through this today, but... If you guys want to subscribe and help me get YouTube rank, so yeah, I just I I mean I want YouTube rank either way, obviously. But you know, <laughs> if you want to subscribe and help me get YouTube rank, that would be extremely greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, so today YouTubers and admins can play. Tomorrow will be it includes builders, council, and staff, and then Wednesday um, it adds MP plus pluses. So that's when the MP plus pluses will be able to come in and start playing. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go through this forum post. I will link this in the description. This is a forum post by Jay Varman. Um, and yeah, so first of all, it's talking about how it may be buggy, report bugs here. So uh, yeah, once it opens the MP++, you guys should definitely report bugs there if you see them. So this is the how to play. You log on to the alpha server and then you can use the NPC or slash play skyblock to get in. And then you'll be given a special profile. You get protector, various talismans, items, fairy souls, and uh, decently high levels and other stats or skill levels. Of the stats um so then from there you can talk to ophelia and ophelia is this npc right here um apparently this is the one that will give you um it'll give that's where you can get gear from like they can take gear from her for free so that makes me think that in actual dungeons it's going to be some kind of uh, um maybe shop for gear or something um i assume it would have some kind of correlation so i think that's what it might be uh, but yeah, then the you're gonna want to create a party. Then recommended amount of players is five. If you have less than that, it, you're like at a disadvantage, and it will actually tell you that, I believe, uh, when you go to enter. So yeah, here you can see some of the stuff you get uh, when you first spawn in, and then you can talk to Ophelia. And there's all the items you can get, and then talking to Mort here is where you can actually enter. And then I believe they're gonna they're only gonna open it up to four three at max for the alpha. Um, and I believe it, it's going to be like more floors open each day or something like that, uh, depending how much time goes. I believe only like today, I believe that only the first floor is going to be open. So, so now he made a party and he goes to enter and it says recommended with five players. He only has two. So it tells him that he's kind of underpowered. Uh, but yeah, then once you get inside, you talk to more again and there's a dungeon orb here. So you have to claim this dungeon orb. And this is basically what allows you to use your class abilities and it gives you like your abilities for your class. He claims it and then you hit start dungeon and then this is where you can pick your class. So each class has different abilities here. Now, if you guys wanna see the specific abilities and stuff of every single class, again, this will be linked in the description and all these videos are on the forum post. So you can go and check it yourself. I'm just kind of doing an overview of how everything works here. So then here we have dungeon mechanics. So they're randomly generated. Um, there are already a hundred plus different rooms that can be selected. There's always one main path from the entrance to the water room. Um, and then rooms outside the main path usually reward strong dungeon buffs useful to beat the watcher and the boss. So I don't exactly know what the watcher is. Um, maybe it's some kind of mini boss or something, um, but it talks about watcher and boss. So not totally sure there, but it does definitely sound strong. Anyways, things may change from 4 to 4. Deeper 4s often are larger and with new and stronger monsters, different boss fights, and they even include uh, different types of puzzle rooms and regular rooms. Um, and then also every room in the dungeon has at least one hidden secret. Some have up to five or more. Um, now these can be hard to find, but they're rewarding because you get blessings, which are basically dungeon buffs, and they will help you beat the bosses. And then the goal is always to find keys because those are what you use to progress through the dungeon so um, this video kind of shows what I, some of what I was talking about there this is the map the green is the starting room and then these black ones are like where you need to go and explore I already um, so if I skip through uh, here a little bit but he talks about how you sure. want to um, like he knows where he needs to go but it's a good idea to just explore the dungeon because you can find secrets again I just talked about that you can find secrets and that will help you um, you know, you get buffs and beat the bosses easier. Now he goes and he finds multiple different uh, buffs there. He also talks about here, there are many bosses that will roam around. He actually saw one there in the corner. Um, he'll, I think he's about to kill it as well. There it is, the angry archaeologist. So that's like a mini boss and apparently they will roam around. 
um, you know, the dungeons. And then when you kill them, those are actually what drop the wither keys. You see, you just picked one up there. I don't know if you can get them other ways. Um, and I also don't know if mini bosses are guaranteed to drop them, but I do know that they do drop them. At least they have a chance, but I don't really know. But see, there's the wither door right there. He used that to open the wither door. And now I can progress farther through the dungeon. Now here is a room that he says is in every dungeon, and these are called revive rooms. Each of these rooms, it's in every dungeon, and it means, if you see this, that means you're going the right way to get to the boss, I believe. Um, so in each of these rooms, there will always be four fairies here. And if you kill these fairies, it'll either revive one of your teammates, or if all of your teammates are like alive, it drops a revive stone. And then the revive stone, basically when you die, it will revive you. So those are pretty useful. Now here he starts talking about how again you don't have to clear the entire dungeon. Like this is the boss. This is the boss door, by the way. So this is a, he said this is a really short one, but um. Anyways, he says you don't have to. You don't have to clear the entire dungeon, but it's a good idea because you'll find blessings and things that will help you in your boss fight. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier. Plus, you also um it increases the amount. Uh, see how it says dungeon cleared twenty percent. The more of it you clear, the better loot that you will get from killing the boss. And you can get like different items like uh, weapons and armors from killing the boss. There are some more videos on that. I'm going to explain that in a little bit as well. How those are all going to work. Um, but yeah, so it's a good idea. It's always a good idea to explore as much of the dungeon as you can. Try to find all the secrets. And then next here, he's talking about the dungeon orb and explaining how it works. So depending on your class, again, this is what gives you your abilities. And like the stats of your class uh, if I actually turn off the subtitles here um, so this is the this is the archer I believe he picked the archer class so item ability thunderstorm um, strikes enemies with strikes enemies with lightning I believe and then guided sheep deals a bunch of damage based on mage level oh wait maybe he picked mage class because it says based on mage level that's another thing the classes have levels you can level up your classes now there is more information on that again I'll explain that a bit more in a bit. But yeah, basically you can use the dungeon orb to uh, use your different abilities. So you'll actually see him here in a second. So you just use thunderstorm and now it's striking everything with lightning. And also back here, yeah, so he just launched that sheep thing, the guided sheep. In. So from there, it talks classes in the dungeon orb. There's five classes, berserker, mage, healer, tank, archer. Each class grants stats, ghost abilities, and passives. So, uh, if you're the only one in your class in the dungeon run, your class will become a lot stronger. That's actually something I hadn't read yet. That's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so, the dungeon orb is an item being given by more. It changes depending what class you select. You can either right click the dungeon orb to use your class ability or left click to use your ultimate ability. Inside the dungeon, you can also use your ultimate by simply clicking your drop key. Instead of dropping the item you're holding, it'll activate the ultimate or tell you how long you have to wait for the cooldown to be up. You can still drop items by opening your inventory and using drop key. Okay. So this part right here, items and progression. So this is extremely important. This is going to be how you basically get through the game, what what your gear throughout the entire thing is going to be looking like and stuff like that. So you'll quickly notice that gear you loot from monsters and dungeons have lower stats than regular scavlock gear and sometimes same items have different stats or rarities. Dungeon items are special types of items. They have a durability, which is a lot more than regular Minecraft items, and they get buffed by your catacomb levels. So every dungeon run you receive catacomb XP and class XP, and the more you level up, the stronger your dungeon items will get inside of dungeons, up to 600% of their defaults. That's six times more than their default stats. Okay. An easy way to estimate how strong your dungeon loot is, is to look at the gear level of that item. Gear level makes it quite easy to compare two, how strong two different pieces are. So, like I said before, uh, you do get uh, like gear from killing the bosses, but also when you kill mobs in the dungeon, you also have a chance of dropping gear. Now, when you actually get gear, it comes with reforges and enchantments all the, already on it. So, another thing here is he has two different pairs of heavy uh, leggings. They're the same gear, but they're different. Uh, let me rewind a little bit, Tori. Yeah, see, one of them is rare and one of them is epic. Now... Every, every time it drops a gear, there's like a randomizer that goes off, and basically if you're lucky, you can get better versions of gear, um, but you know, there's like different versions of the same gear, you can get worse or better variants, and it can be, like I said, the same gear. These are both heavy leggings. 
Now, if you see this gear score here, this overall shows you uh, how good the gear is. The higher that is, that's generally going to tell you, okay, this piece is better than the other piece. So that obviously isn't perfect, but it's a really good estimation. It takes into account the different stats as well as the passive abilities and things. And so I said this before, but dungeon items do have durability. Now, it is high durability, but it is durability. Uh, when it breaks though, it doesn't completely break, it just becomes unusable and then you have to repair it. I don't think they ever specify how you actually repair it here. Um, but yeah, you just have to repair it when the when that durability runs out. So then here, this is the dungeon's progression cool. video. Now, in this video, he explains basically, basically how the skills work, how like leveling up your classes works and um, as well as what the gear progression is going to look like. So basically, uh, the more you do dungeons, you're going to get XP for the cat like catacombs XP as well as XP for your class, whatever class you're using in that dungeon run. When you level up your classes, obviously, they become stronger. I, I don't know if they're going to unlock new abilities. I don't think he ever says anything specifically like that. Um, it's possible. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it necessarily. Um, but that's just my that's just speculation for me, but they're gonna become stronger. They'll get better stats that is guaranteed Also with the catacombs XP by the way, there will be different XP for different dungeons once those release um, Obviously, they're only starting with catacombs, but they're gonna release a lot more anyways um, they will be that will make you stronger in the catacombs like it'll make your gear stronger in the catacombs um, And like I said, it gets up to like six times stronger than normal um, up here, you get inside dungeons up to 600% of the default stats. Your gear can become that strong. And these, these also, these levels also go up to level 50 as well. So I kind of talked about how you get gear from beating bosses. So first of all, you're going to be starting to do the first, the first few um, dungeons or first levels or whatever. Obviously, we don't have dungeons gear yet, so you're going to need to start with the gear you already have. You know, you're superior, you're perfect, whatever class you're going, whatever works with that class, that's what you're going to need to start with. But then, as you start getting dungeons gear and leveling up your catacombs um, as well and things like that, like your catacombs level, those pieces of gear are going to start to be, those pieces of gear are going to start to become really, really strong, and they're going to become better than any gear you have right now, at least in dungeons. So that's how you're going to start to get through more of the levels in the dungeons. Obviously, the, the regular gear is not going to be able to, it's only going to get you so far. You're going to have to go to dungeons gear to actually be able to keep progressing through the dungeons. Now, I know that sounds bad for your current gear. You're like, oh no, my current gear is going to become useless. That isn't quite true, though. Now, before I get into that, there's another thing here called essence. Now, essence can be used to upgrade dungeon gear. Um, but it can also be used to upgrade regular gear. First of all, with dungeon gear, uh, he's he's got he's showing it off here, right here. Uh, if you go to dungeon or essence crafting, sorry, he's gonna put those those leggings in there. See how they have two stars there? They have two stars, and that basically means he's upgraded it twice. If he puts it in there, he can now upgrade it again. Um, if he will show, it. yeah, there he is. So now it would have a third star, and it costs twenty undead essence. There's different kinds of essence as well. I don't know how the different kinds of essence and play or different kinds of essence play into it. I assume you know different different gears will require different essences, like different kinds of essence. Uh, but the other thing is now you saw what he just did. He put his protector armor in there. Now this is a big thing. This this is what the end game it seems of dungeons is gonna look like. Your your superior, your perfect armor, none of that is gonna become useless. None of it will be useless. Okay you are going to be able to upgrade that gear into dungeons gear so it's going to cost a lot of essence obviously you can see there's 700 dragon essence is i don't think that's cheap I'm, i mean i haven't played it yet but that doesn't seem like it's cheap at all <laughs> the other one took 20 essence to upgrade um so yeah you can upgrade your non dungeons gear into dungeons gear and then you can upgrade it even further with that star system Plus, that gear will then become stronger inside the dungeons. So, yeah, it does seem like your your gear that you already have now, it's not going to become useless in the slightest. It's still going to be really good. It just might take a while to get to the point where it is really good. Now, right now, there is going to... So, there is going to be another level of progression past that, though. Now, they do say that they want... Normally, they don't want things from dungeons to be the best stuff in the game. 
However, right now they have done almost nothing to the late game for months. So right now they're making an, an exception, and you're gonna be able to. The best gear in the game is gonna come from the last levels of the dungeons here. Uh, that's gonna become the best gear in the game, whatever gear that is. Uh, you'll get it from beating those um, those bosses or those dungeons. Um, but I assume that also means that they have plans to add, because they said they don't want to stay that way. So I assume that also means that they have plans to add new things into the late game uh, soon after dungeon. Well, it may not be soon. I have no idea. I don't want to say soon because I have no. I really have no idea. But um, at some point in the future, obviously. But I think that I think that gear also isn't going to be just good inside of dungeons. They said it's going to become the best gear in the game again, only temporarily. But it's going to be the best gear in the game, and I assume that means outside of dungeons as well. So basically, to give that an overview, you start with whatever gear you have, then you start picking up dungeon gear, start using that, then you're able to upgrade your regular gear and switch back to that, and then there's going to be new gun dungeon gear that's going to be the best in the game. Um, at least for now, again, it's probably going to go back to something. Um, that you get outside of dungeons but we'll just have to see how that goes so that's most of the info there last thing here is ghosts now players don't really die in dungeons they become ghosts which can be revived so in the catacombs entrance and four ones ghosts automatically revive after 15 and 16 seconds respectively revive stones will also revive you uh we shot we saw those the ultimate healer ability also will revive one teammate and healers automatically revive after 9 seconds when they become ghosts. And if all players become ghosts, then the dungeon run will end. And while players are ghosts, they obtain new abilities and passes related to their stats. Use them wisely. So it looks like you can even do things as a ghost, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, that's going to be about it for this. It was, I mean, it wasn't exactly short. But <laughs> yeah, that's basically everything on dungeons. The way everything's going to work. It's, it's a lot of stuff. I'm definitely hyped for it. Again, guys... Uh, it sucks that I couldn't play it early, but if you want to help me out getting YouTube rank, I would appreciate it so much. I'm like 2,000 subscribers off. Drop a sub. It would mean so much. Um, and yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all next time. Peace. I don't believe in destiny. I just do what's best for me. Don't listen to my enemies. They're just full of jealousy. Yeah, this legacy. You gon' see what's left of me. You gon' see success in me. You ain't seen the rest of me. I just me. wanna be the best at what I know. Better than the rest, just watch me grow. Put me to the test and watch me go. This is my